Hey guys, in this Spark AR Studio tutorial, I want to show you how you can create a film roll filter like this in the Spark AR Studio, which has three camera streams. So I'm also up here and also down there and also has this nice frame. Yeah, I will um, provide you the frame for this filter, but of course you can use your own assets as well. So yeah. Just follow along this tutorial and in the end you will have a nice film roll filter like this. So let's go! Hey again! So let's create this film roll filter here in the Spark AR Studio. Before we start the creation, make sure you have created all the assets you want to use for this filter. But of course you can also use my um, asset I have created. So just go to the description of this video and then click on the download link. You will end up here on this Dropbox site and there you will find this frame.bng file. Here on the right side you can see how this file looks. So we have three segments where we will, will see the camera stream later and here is the resolution of this file. 576 times 1024 pixels. This is the size um, yeah, the Spark AR Studio works with, with. So yeah, just download this this asset and then we can start with the creation of this filter. The first thing is of course to import the asset we have just downloaded. So just go to your assets panel, click on the plus, go to import and then from computer. Here just select the frame.png file and click on open. After the import is done, select the texture, go to the right hand side and make sure the compression is set to none on our free device type. So, after this is done, we need a material for our frame. So for this, we go again to our assets panel, click on the plus and create a new material. So I will rename this material to frame. Then it is time to create a rectangle object here in our scene. So we can also see the frame here in our preview. So go to your scene panel, click on the plus and search for rectangle. After you have created the rectangle, make sure it stretches all, all over the screen. So select the rectangle object, go to the right hand side and set the width and the height to fill width and fill height. Then go down to materials and select the frame material. The moment it is just a gray screen because we have to set up our material. So for this we go again to the assets panel, click on the frame material, then go to the right hand side and we make sure that the shader type is set to flat. And for the texture, we select our frame texture. So now we have already the frame overlay, but yeah, we have just one um, video stream here. We want three of them. So one here on the top, one in the middle, and also one down here. So let's do this. And the first thing is that we create a new material for the three camera streams. So yeah, we have just the we will just use the camera texture. But of course, you can also do this with a LUT. Um, so we go to our scene, click on the camera object, then we go to the right hand side and here we click on the little plus next to texture extraction. Then we can find our camera texture in our assets panel here. So now again, create a new material. I will rename this to camera. Then select the camera material, go to the right hand side and set the shader type to flat. Then go down to diffuse and for the texture select the camera texture. So now we go again to our scene. Then I will rename this rectangle, the first one we have created, to frame so we don't get confused later. And then we create a new rectangle. So I will just um, rename this to cam1. So this will be this um, section here. Then I will just yeah, go again to the right hand side and set this to fill width and to fill height. Then I will go down to materials and here I click on plus again and select the camera material. So now the frame is gone because our new rectangle is above our frame here um, at the layers. So just go to, the, to your scene and then drag and drop your cam above the frame layer. And then again, the camera is 
behind the frame. So now when we change the mode of the viewport from edit 3D objects to edit 2D objects, we can already move around our yeah, cam layer and we can already see that there are multiple camera streams and yeah, we can do this wherever we want, but we will leave it in the middle right now and do it later because we don't will do the placement with drag and drop. We will program it in the patch editor. So we um, make sure that it looks the same on all device types. So now we need, of course, another um, yeah, another camera stream. So we will just duplicate our cam one rectangle. So just right click on the cam one and then click on duplicate. And now we have also a cam two rectangle. Yeah, just make sure the cam two rectangle has also the camera material. So the next step we have to do is to yeah extract the position properties of our two cam rectangles to the patch editor. To do this, we go to our cam one rectangle then we go to the right hand side and we click on the little arrow next to position and then we do the same for cam 2 so also click on it go to the right hand side and then click on the little arrow next to position so now we can find those two yellow patches in our patch editor now we need another patch um, not from the add patch section but we would need this from the um, device object in our scene. So for this just drag and drop the device object from the scene to the patch editor. After we have done this we will find this device patch here in the patch editor. So now we will do some programming so that the filter looks the same on all devices because otherwise it could be that yeah it is overlapping differently on the device types so we will do this in the patch editor and not with the drag and drop feature here. So the first patch we would need is a divide patch. For the first input of the divide patch, we will use the screen size input of the output of the device. And for the um, second input, we will use the screen scale um, output of the device patch. So now we will calculate the device resolution we can use later to yeah, um, move our objects. So the next um, patch we need is an unpack patch. So we will unpack this signal to our two vectors. So we have the two vectors separated. Um, yeah, now it is set to vector three, but we would need it to vector two. And now just connect the output of the divide patch with the value input of the unpack patch. So now we can play around with the X and the Y um, yeah, values of our device. So the next patch we need here is a divide patch. Then we will use the Y output of our unpack patch and um, yeah, connect it with the first input of our divide patch. So now we need to pack patches. So just create one, search it, then set the pack patch from vector three to vector two, and then just yeah, duplicate this patch. So now we will connect the output of the divide patch to the second input of the first pack patch and then the um, yeah, output of this goes to the 2D position of the cam 1. So now we can already see that one camera stream is underneath um, the yeah, our, our camera stream here. And then for the second, we need a negate patch. So add a new patch, search for negate and add this patch. So now the divide output goes into the negate input and the negate output goes into the second input of the second pack patch. And then the cam2 gets connect, uh, the 
output of the pack patch gets connected with the cam2 patch. And now we can also see the second um, video stream here, but they are really far apart. So we have to make sure that they yeah, get closer to each other. And we can set this with the divide patch. And here, if you have a different scale of your frame, you can just play around as long um, yeah, it fits. So now when I change the second number of this divide patch, this input here to let's say 1.2, the um, yeah, rectangles get closer to each other. So that now there is a small gap left but when I would set this to 1.3, um, it is already perfect, but it is a little bit too much because as you can see here, it's almost overlapping to my original camera stream here in the middle. So let's say make it to 0 point, uh, 1.25, too, mu too much, 1.28. So I think that's a great value yeah if you have another frame you are using here yeah just make sure um you yeah set this value right and yeah now you have successfully created a film roll effect here in this buggy r studio now you can of course play around with um, LUTs you can use you can do a crane overlay you can do a light leak overlay um yeah so just make the filter you want. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, it would be nice when you subscribe to it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.